If you've ever had anything wear out in the heat and humidity of South Louisiana, let's hope that happens to BP's oil. Because on our trip to Alaska, we learned that Exxon's oil stuck around in the cold. Tonight, part two of our special series, Northern Exposure, Lessons from Valdez. Dave Jenka has just struck oil. Looking pretty normal and clean on the very surface, but scrape it black, and there's, the, there's that layer. See the droplets of crude right now, really black stuff there. On Night Island, his is not a suspenseful search. Jenka, a charter boat captain, digs down an inch or two to find Exxon's oil from 1989 embedded in rocks and dirt. So I just stepped there, and from over here, I can see a sheen on there. I didn't do any digging or anything. It was just my footprint. So you realize it's not something that's going to go away very easily. The, the ones that surprise me on some beaches, you don't even need to turn anything over. You can still find it right on the surface. Night and a string of other islands were ground zero, the first places where oil from the Valdez struck land. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at subsurface uh, Exxon Valdez crude oil 21 years later. It's uh, mixed with the sediments, sat in here, very thick, soaked down in. This isn't exactly the South Louisiana marsh, but <laughs> no. maybe the closest thing you've got. Right, right. This is one of the few spots that, that they considered a marsh. It even got nicknamed Death Marsh. Yep. As the cleanup dragged on in the year following Valdez, state regulators decided to allow Water nature here. to take its course in places like Death Marsh or Diesel Beach. The oil would just disappear in four or five years. There was a conscious decision not to clean this after a time. Correct. Why? Yeah. I think they were afraid that the, the cleaning would do more harm than just leaving the oil there and letting Mother Nature take care of it. Five years stretched into 21. So this is just an absorbent pad that absorbs oil and not water. Check it out 20 seconds later. Just rinse off some of the dirt. And, uh, the most part, that's oil. That's oil. Today, Prince William Sound is once again a living postcard, striking vistas, wonders of nature, new generations. This baby on board represents continuing recovery for the sea otter. But other species remain decimated. A couple years after the Valdez, the herring population suddenly fell off a cliff. The entire fishery remains closed today. Jennifer Todd of the Prince William Sound Science Center is casting for young herring Excellent. to try and solve a mystery. Why are these youngsters sick? That right there is a parasite, and all those little spots are from past parasites. So he has been somebody's banquet dinner. They've got visible lesions, parasites. They're pretty sickly. They move real slow. The latest state count shows herring growing in numbers. But Todd says the odds are stacked against this batch. These are really unhealthy. The chances of them reaching adulthood is very slim. There's no conclusive scientific finding for what's wrong with the herring, but biologists and oceanographers see the spill as a likely suspect. There was a lot of research after the spill on the effects of oil and, and herring, and obviously it doesn't do them a lick of good. And it's taken a devastating toll on commercial fishermen. Uh, Cordova used to wake up from a long winter's nap in, uh, in mid-March. And uh, that was when we began to get ready for the herring fisheries. Now in fishing communities like Cordova, Alaska, winter effectively stretches another six weeks until salmon start running. Those who lived through it believe a lot of the pain could have been avoided if not for the slow response to the spill. On Night Island, three critical days were lost while a giant pool of oil lurked offshore. And then a big north wind came up and blew it down this direction, hitting these islands ahead of us. The rocky beach terrain helped lock oil in place in effectively cold storage in Alaska. Experts tell us oil will break down in the heat and humidity of South Louisiana. But Dave Jenka watches the Gulf spill from a distance and fears mistakes 
are being repeated. And some of the size wasn't sufficient either. A lot of the, the pictures I've seen from the Gulf of Mexico, these are just little harbor booms they're using. They're, they're nothing in the, in the size um, that's needed and even and similar to the sizes we have that are in place here, and I, I feel some of that's even lacking. Alaska state biologists find nature is, after all, taking its course, working to break down the oil on Night Island at a rate of 4% a year. It's a lot of these, some of these beaches, you know, I, I have a harder time finding it. That 4% a year is happening, you know. It's just that for the rest of my life up here, we'd still, we're going to still be uh, dealing with it. Really smells of hydrocarbons. Workers used high pressure hoses to clean up a lot of the rocky coastline. A government panel found years later that that did more harm than good. So there's, you know, there's, that applies to South Louisiana and the huge yeah. debate about how to handle this. And, and that just brings up something for me. You see that, you know, there's oil still there. They said, do nothing with it. That was the best thing. You've heard people here saying you do nothing in the marshes. That's the best thing here. I mean, you don't really know, right? Well, I mean, I, you certainly in some marsh areas, yeah. You, you, you know, they've got those machines to suck yeah. it out, but you yeah. can't, you can't go in there with buggies. They did the equivalent of going in. You know, they were trampling Native American artifacts. They were taking down mm -hmm. some lichen that looks like oil because it's black. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, hopefully we've learned some mistakes that people get the training to know. How, what not to do in the marsh. So are there, I, I saw yeah. the, the fish, that you, the herring, are there other species suffering? Yeah, and the they herring? don't really know. There were, the estimates on seabirds are anywhere from 100,000 to 300,000 seabirds. And here's something else about the Gulf. There are, they're called pelagic seabirds, pelagic birds, that are, you know, 40 miles offshore. You don't have any idea how mm -hmm. many of these gulls or others are dropping in BP spill because they don't all wash up on shore. So today, one of the species suffering, or some of them, are those seabirds that eat herring, for example. 